So what we're going to ask ourselves today is, what if you put something in front here? What if you put something in front of the x? Sorry, in front of the f of x, in front of the function. I'd like you to look at this graph here. Now, this graph here is a semicircle. It's a semicircle of radius what? It's a semicircle of radius 2. There it is. Part A asks, or says, write an equation which represents that there. Well, as an equation, it would look like this. y equals, if f of x is this big square root, 3 f of x would be 3 times this big square root. In terms of my replacements, what I've really done is I've replaced y with one-third y. I thought you replaced it with a three. No, no, no. I replaced the y with a one-third y, but Nicole, a one-third right here would become what when I moved it over? A three. Okay. What letter did we replace, Steph? Because I asked you to. What letter did we replace? I'll never get tired of that joke. Yeah. What letter did we replace? Yeah, we replaced the y. That means this is going to be a vertical something. As it turns out, this ends up being a vertical. Amanda, look at the replacement. You replaced y with one third y. Everything's backwards. If you try and make y one third as big, it ends up being a vertical expansion. by a factor of 3. It ends up being a vertical expansion by a factor of 3. Holly, what that means is all of your heights are going to become 3 times as high. I'll show you what this would look like. It says use a graphing calculator. We're going to do this one by hand because I haven't handed out the graphing calculators yet. Ready, Amanda? How high am I right there? It's a trick question, but how high am I right there? Zero. You know what? If I go three times as high as zero, how high am I still? What's three times zero? This is invariant. Cassandra, how high am I right here? It's a trick question. And you know what a vertical expansion by a factor of three of zero is? Zero. Ah, but Shannon, here's the more interesting one. How high am I right here? If I vertically expand that by a factor of 3, you know how high it's going to end up? Mm -hmm. That point moves to there. This graph would look like this. And you now know the equation for the Pope's hat. It's true. I thought it was Baroque. No, it's an equation. Okay. By the way, I want you to notice what happened to the x-intercepts. Did they move at all? Fancy word? Let's write that down. What happened to the y-intercepts? It did expand by a factor of 3. You know what? I'm going to go, it did that. I'm not going to rewrite the whole phrase. It's still replacing y with 1 third y, which becomes a 3 over here. Everything's backwards. Replacing y with 1 third y makes it 3 times as high, not 1 third as high. A vertical expansion by a factor of 3. D. D says, write an equation which represents y equals 1 half of f of x. Well, that would look like this. y equals 1 half, great big square root of 4 minus 
x squared. If I think about it in terms of a replacement, we've replaced the y with a 2y. And then, Carson, we divided by 2 to move it over, and that's where the 1 half came from. What did we replace y with? Everything's backwards. This is going to end up still being vertical. But instead of an expansion by a factor of 2, it ends up being what we call a compression by a factor of 1 half. All of your heights end up half as high. What would that look like? Well, Nicole... How high am I right here? If I compress that by a factor of a half, how high am I now? Still zero. Here's the more interesting one. Nicole, how high am I right here? If I compress that by a factor of half, of a, of a half, or how high will I end up being? Compress it by a factor of a half. Yep, half as high. How about this one, Nicole? Well, I'm zero high, compress it by a factor of a half, still zero high, fancy word invariant. That red graph is the image of the black one, compressed by a factor of a half. Once again, Amanda, because it was vertical, you know what happened to the x-intercepts? They were invariant. And the y-intercepts underwent a vertical compression by a factor of a half. It says, compared to the original, the graph of this. Now, I don't quite like the way the workbook does it. I don't like that they start out with the a right here. To me, it should be here, and then we divide to move it over. But because they're starting out with the A right here, in this notation, Steph, things are no longer backwards because we've moved the A over, and now it's no longer backwards. So here's what it says. Compared to this, this results in a vertical stretch about the... Now think about it. If you're stretching a graph vertically, which axis are you stretching it about? If you're stretching it about the y-axis, which axis is not moving at all? You're stretching it about the x-axis. The x-axis is sitting still, and you're stretching like a big piece of rubber, the graph. So it turns out a vertical stretch is about the x-axis, just like a vertical reflection was about the x-axis. And if this number here is bigger than 1, for example, y equals 3 f of x, then you have an expansion. And if the number sitting where the a is is between 0 and 1, a fraction, for example, Ryan, y equals 1 half f of x, then you have a compression. Cassandra, replacing y with something is always vertical. Replacing y with 5y, one-fifth as high. It's a vertical compression by 1 over 5. Replacing y with one-fifth y, it's five times as high. All of your heights will be multiplied by 5. What about if we replace x with bx? What if we put something in front of bx, another coefficient there? It says... The graph of y equals f of x equals that. There's our semicircle of radius 2. And then there's a bit of a typo here, I think. Look up. Everywhere in part a and b where there's a f of 4x, I'd like you to instead make it an f of 2x, an f of 2x, an f of 
2x. Oh, and then in C where it says describe how the number 4, it's actually describe how the number 2. And you'll see why I did that in just a second. Katie, I'm going to argue that to turn that into that, we've replaced the x with a 2x. In my equation itself, it would look like this. y equals great big square root. That's not an x. That's not an x. Oh, that's an x. I'll replace the whole thing with a 2x all squared. See it first, and I replace the x with a 2x. Uh, by the way, probably they would tidy this up. They would probably choose to write it this way. 4 minus 4x four squared. They'd probably go, 2 squared is 4. I don't like this as much. This is much clearer to me what's going on. I can see the substitution. I can see, Matthias, that I've replaced x with 2x. You know what that does? First of all, x vertical or horizontal x vertical or horizontal x vertical or horizontal x vertical or horizontal it's absolutely always absolutely horizontal so when it says state what's going on I'm gonna write here horizontal and once again here Amanda everything's backwards it's not going to get twice as fat. It's going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of one half. Horizontal compression by a factor of one half. In our notes, we'll abbreviate this in our homework, but if I gave this to you on a test as a multiple choice question, that's how I write the phrase. So I want you just to be familiar with it so when you see it, you don't go like, what the heck is that? Katie, how would I graph this? You ready? You ready? You ready? Let's start right here, Katie. Now, horizontal. Now I'm thinking x-coordinates, x-coordinates, x-coordinates. Horizontal. What's my x-coordinate right now on this point, Katie? Compress that by a factor of a half. Instead of 2 to the right, you know what's going to end up? 1 to the right. Same height, though. Oh, Katie, this point right here, trick question. What is my x-coordinate right here? How far left and right am I? You know what? If I compress that by a factor of a half, you know where I end up? Invariant. Doesn't move. Ah! But this left-hand graph here, instead of negative 2, you know what it's going to become? I agree totally. Negative 1. That red graph is the image of the original with a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. Replacing x, trying to make it bigger. No, nope, it's going to get fatter to compensate. Everything's backwards. Sorry, it's going to get skinnier to compensate. That's say it's going to get fatter. It's going to get skinnier to compensate. Everything's backwards. Oh, now you got me yawning. What happened to the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept this time was invariant. Why? Because if you're a y-intercept, what's your x-coordinate? Zero. And if you stretch zero, it's still zero. What happened to the x-intercepts, though? Did they stay where they were? No. Jessica, you know what happened to them? They underwent a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. Now let's compare that with D. D says, write an equation which represents f of one-third x. What have we replaced x with here? Meant to be really obvious. Yep. We have replaced x with one-third x. Andrew, is that going to be vertical or horizontal? How do I know instantly without having to think about it? X. X. 
and everything's backwards. As it turns out, this is going to be a horizontal. It won't be a compression. You know what it's going to end up being? An expansion by a factor of 3. What does that mean? Andrew, it means that all of my x-coordinates are going to be three times bigger. Andrew, what's my x-coordinate right here, right now? What's it going to become? Yep. What's my x-coordinate right here, right now? You know what's going to become? Invariant. And this one's going to become positive 6. That red graph is the image of the original under the transformation y equals f of 1 third x, a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2. How many of you played Super Mario's when you were a kid? Okay, when he ate the mushroom, all they were doing was, because remember Mario is a function, it's a weird complicated one, but it's a function, to make him twice as big, all they did, they replaced all the y's with a half y, and all of the x's with a half x, and that would give you a horizontal expansion by 2, and a vertical expansion by 2. Very easy to do. Is, it, is he twice as big or three times as big? I've never actually measured it. He might be three times as big, in which case they'd replace y with one-third y and x with one-third x. So three times as big. Very simple to do. Uh, once again, we notice the y-intercept is invariant. In, let's try that again, Mr. Duke. Invariant. Stop yawning, Mr. Duke. Ah! That was for me. Didn't work. Rats. Uh, the x-intercepts, those are the ones that underwent the horizontal compression by a factor of, or sorry, horizontal expansion by a factor of 3. When is it a compression? When it's a fraction less than 1. When is it an expansion? When it's a number bigger than 1. Well, you take marks off what we call an expansion and compression and vice versa? Probably not. But on the multiple choice section of your test, I will totally use that. So, compared to the graph of f of x, f of bx results in a horizontal stretch. And it turns out you're stretching about the y-axis. This is what you're stretching about, because the y-axis is standing still, and you're stretching around it. What's it say right there? By a factor of what? What's it say right there, Amanda? By a factor of 1 over b. In other words, replacing x with 2x gave you a compression factor of 1 over 2. Replacing x with one third x gave you a compression factor of one over one over three, which is just three. You're taking the reciprocal. Duck. Yes, Katie. How come it's one over b here, but back here it's not one over a? Because they've already moved it over, so it's already become backwards. So you don't need to take the reciprocal anymore in this case. That's why I wish they'd written it the same way both times. I wish they'd kind of said, look, it's always the reciprocal as long as the y thing is next to the y thing. So if b is greater than 1, for example, y equals f of 3x, that's going to be a compression by a factor of 1 over b, 1 over 3 in this case. If b is a fraction, y equals f of 1 half x. That's going to be an expansion. Turn the page. Page 41 is kind of nice. It asks, 
okay, what if there's also a negative in front? What if a is less than zero? Well, if there's a negative right here, this is a negative right here, what else happens to your graph? Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. And what did a negative do? Flip. Eh. Skip it. Page 42. Now page 42 is asking, what if you have a negative right here? What did a negative do right there? Horizontal reflection. Good. Thank you for learning that. Page 43 is what I want to get to. Lovely summary of everything we've done today. So, we're looking at the A being right here. If A is a fraction, for example, Y equals 1 half F of X. That's the same as replacing y with 2y. <coughs> and when you look at the replacements, everything's backwards. You replace y with 2y, it doesn't get twice as high. You know what? It's a vertical compression. What would the vertical compression here factor here be, Nicole? What would the vertical compression factor here be? It's whatever number is sitting there. Because you've already made it backwards, moving it over, so it's no longer backwards. And it is about the x-axis. So as an example, thin graph, thick graph. Thin graph is my original. Thick graph, you can see, has been compressed. Does not go as high. Does not go as high. Uh, greater than 1. Like uh, y equals 3 f of x, which you may recall would have come from this, replacing y with one third y. This was the format that you were more used to, the parabola. Yeah, I really started something with Nicole. I'm yawning now, too, and I'm passing it to everybody else. This is terrible. This, this was what you did last year with the parabola. This will be a vertical expansion by a factor of A, and you're expanding about the x-axis. Higher, higher. Vertical expansion. Oh, Last thing, for what it's worth, Steph, if A is less than 0, that's the fancy way in math of writing if A is negative, it's also going to be a vertical flip. It will be reflected in the x axis and compressed or expanded vertically in the x axis. So you're going to have more than one thing going on. It's going to lead to problems down the road, but right now it'll work. Terrible. Hey, let's look at x's. If we replace f of x, if we put a b there, that's a fraction. For example, y equals f of 1 half x, where we've replaced x with 1 half x. Vertical or horizontal? How do I know instantly? Horizontal. Everything's backwards. Putting a 1 half x would mean expansion factor by 2. This will be a horizontal expansion by a factor of... What would the expansion factor here be? What did I say in my example? If I generalize that, 1 over b. Take the reciprocal of whatever number is there. That's your factor. And if you're stretching horizontally, you're stretching about the y-axis. What if 
b is bigger than 1? What if b is not a fraction? For example, y equals f of 3x. Replacing x with 3x. Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. How do I know? It's next to the x. Horizontal what? Well, replacing x with 3x, everything's backwards. This is going to be a horizontal compression. This would be a compression by a factor of one third. It's always a compression by a factor of one over b, and it's always about the y axis. Oh, and 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 and, and if b is also negative, there's going to be a horizontal reflection. It's going to be reflected in the y axis and compressed or expanded about the y-axis. Let's try some. Oh no, first let's summarize. Page 44, lovely summary. Now let's try some. It says, example one, write the replacement for x or y, and then write the equation of the image of y equals f of x after each transformation. A. Horizontal expansion by factor of 6. Horizontal. Going to replace x with... If I want to expand it by a factor of 6, what am I going to replace x with? 1 sixth x. So it would look like this. y equals f of x over 6, or 1 sixth x. They're interchangeable. D, B, sorry, B, a vertical expansion, vertical, replace Y with something, factor of one-fifth, everything's backwards, 5Y. In scientific notation, 5y equals f of x, although they would almost certainly move the 5 to this side and say, that looks better. Okay, C, a reflection. Okay, reflections are negatives. We're reflecting in the x-axis. That means, uh, oh, I've uh, got to think careful. We're reflecting in the x-axis. What kind of a reflection is that? We're reflecting in the x-axis. What kind of a vertical? We're going to replace y with negative y. There's also a vertical expansion about the x-axis. We're also going to replace y with we want to vertically expand by a factor of 3. We want 1 third y. There's our vertical expansion. And we'll get this. Negative 1 third y equals f of x. Although, I don't think they'd leave a negative 1 third on that side, Cassandra. They'd move it right to here right to here. And you know what a negative one-third on this side would become? Got to be fussy, not a three. A negative three. Skip D, next page. Yo, why is it a negative three? Because you divide by negative one, the negative wouldn't cancel. Right? Are you asking where the negative come from in the first place, or are you asking why is it still negative afterwards? Okay, so how would you move this over? First, you divide by negative 1, which would give you negative there, 
and then you times by three, which would give you a three there, but the negative would still be there. Is that okay? Example two. We're not going to write this down. We're just going to do this orally. How does 3y equals f of x compare with y equals f of x? How do these two graphs compare? Looks like they've replaced y with 3y. Vertical or horizontal? Vertical? Vertical or horizontal for replacing y with 3y? Vertical. Expansion by 3 or compression by a third? Compression by a third. All your heights are one-third as high. Replace x with 4x. Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Four times as wide. Expansion by four or compression by a quarter. Everything's backwards. Compression by a quarter. Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Expansion by three or compression by a third? Expansion by three. Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Compression by one-sixth? Horizontal expansion by 3. Let's try a graph. Example 4. It says the graph of y equals F blah, blah, blah. Take a look at this. What do you see going on here? Found the right page? Good. Um, I see a 2. Is the 2 from the y or is the 2 next to the x? X, vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. That 2 there, is that an expansion by 2 or a compression by a half? That 2 there, expansion by 2 or compression by a half? Compression by a half. That's probably what I, I wouldn't write out. Horizontal compression by a factor of a half. That's probably what I would write out in my notes. Oh, I see one more thing, Holly. Negative. Is the negative outside where the y is, or is the negative inside next to the x? So horizontal or vertical? Is the negative outside in front of the y, where the y is, or is it next to the x? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. It's next to the x, horizontal. This is a, what does a negative do? Horizontal reflection. In the y-axis, but I'm not going to write that because that confuses me. So, Kirsten, I got two things going on here. Compressing horizontally, reflecting horizontally. You ready? We're going to do this together, you and I. This point, we're going to do the key points and connect them. Don't panic. It's going to be easier than you think. What's the x-coordinate, Kirsten, of this point right here? You're, you're right. Say it louder. When I said say it louder and you say it the same volume, it doesn't help at all. Negative 6, compress that by a half. So instead, instead of negative 6, it's going to be negative 3. Hover your pen above negative 3. Don't put a dot there. Just hover there. Reflect it horizontally. Instead of negative 3, it's going to become positive 3. That's where you end up. Negative 6, negative 3, reflect. Oh, that was so much fun, Kirsten. Let's do the next one. What's the x-coordinate of this guy right here? Negative what? Compress that by a half. Reflect. Were the first two points connected? Then connect them. Jessica, what's the x-coordinate here? Compress that by a factor of one half. Still zero. Reflect it. Still zero. Fancy word? Turns out that guy ends up being invariant underneath this transformation. Andrew, what's this one? Compress. You'll notice I don't even care about the Ys. I'm just staying on the same height. You know why I don't care about the Ys? Do you see anything vertical written here at all? So I'm just making sure I move sideways but keep the same height everywhere. Connected? Connect them. What about this point here? Hmm, a little bit trickier. Holly, what's the x-coordinate right now? Compress it by a half. Yes, it's a decimal, but what do you get? 
2.5, reflect it. You know what? I can draw negative 2.5. That's not a hideous decimal. Sure, fair enough. About there. Connect them. Cassandra, what's the x-coordinate of this last one here? Compress it. Reflect it. Dot right there. Connect. That red graph is the image of the black graph. Skinnier and flipped. It's your homework. Try number one. Number one has fractions. Shut up and deal with it. Number two is fairly similar to number one. Three, I'd like you to do A, B, and C, but not D. Skip four. Five is good. All of five? All of five. Six is good. Pass on seven. Very quickly, look at lesson eight, which I also handed out to you, which is a continuation of the same topic. Once again, a lovely summary. Time have I got? I know I've been talking a while. How far am I going to get here? Sorry, what? Oh. I'm going to pause here for now. I'll pick up the rest of this next class. I've talked too much. <laughs>